This is the Todd Shapiro Show on Canada Talks, Sirius XM 167. I'm excited for this interview. A very outspoken lady. And uh, like I say, always, I don't care if you agree with someone's politics or someone's statements, you got to respect them for their conviction and for their kidness. And this lady does it uh, exactly like that. She doesn't hold back and she's not afraid. Uh, welcome to the program, Sydney Watson. Hey, Sydney. Hey, how are you? I'm good, thank you. I'm good. Uh, crank it up below on your end, my producer, so I can hear a little better. But uh, where are you? Uh, are you in Australia? No, no, I'm in D.C. I moved about six months ago. Oh, I didn't realize that to be a uh, to be a journalist. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Because uh, Australia makes it kind of hard to do anything political because the population size is so tiny. So I figured I'd give it all a go in uh, in the hardest country in the world. Well, how? I mean, how is it going for you, Sydney? It's pretty good, honestly. I am. I consistently say that I'm really happy that I moved. Uh, D.C. is definitely a a difficult town, and I'm sure that you guys hear all about how much of a swamp it is, because it is. That's true. But um, no, I'm really glad I moved. There's a lot of opportunity here that I wouldn't get home. At home, rather. Can't speak English. Now, Sydney, yeah. I mean, if if you if for those who haven't listened or watched you, and you get a big YouTube following and a big Instagram following, doing great on Twitter too. um, uh, How would you describe yourself? Uh, in terms of my politics, yeah. uh, politically, politically, you, you in general, like all of it, just you, you, <laughs> you. Oh, well, I mean, uh, I'm, I guess I'm, I'm an American Australian or Australian American. Um, I guess I'm somewhere between conservative and libertarian in my views, which is always hard to explain to other people. Um, and I just, I generally like, uh, I generally like uh, reporting on the news and talking about this sort of stuff because I think the world has gone absolutely insane. So Anything that's politically orientated, throw me in, and I'm all about it, which is obviously and, and, you know, why I'm here. And sorry to interrupt you, because um, you said it very well about the about the somewhere between conservative and libertarian and how people don't get that. And and I know yeah. what you mean there, because, by the way, I'm I'm a little less conservative than you based on what I follow you and I do follow you and read your read your comments and uh, mm-hmm. and, and do re- appreciate you for being as candid as you are. It doesn't mean I agree with everything you say, but I really do respect <laughs> it. Um, and, and my point being is I try to I really try to find middle ground. And even if you try to find middle ground now, you're all of a sudden an alt right Nazi or something like it's crazy to me what's happening in this world. And is that sort of, you know, to what you're alluding to? Well, yeah, I mean, I think that and look, I'm probably quite mm, I don't know if a lot of other conservatives or young conservatives would agree with my perspective on this. But you're right. You know, as soon as you're somewhere between moderate to conservative, you're all of a sudden an alt-right Nazi. Your ideas are invalid and you're going to get screamed at in public if you go, you know, walk around like a Trump hat, for example, particularly in America. But I feel like conservatism there's a lot of conservatives and very and i call them puritan conservatives that get angry with people who don't 100 percent fit the bill and in a way i feel like they're almost as bad as hardcore people on the left so that's why i would say that like my views for instance they kind of oscillate you know on some issues i think hey like i'm pretty libertarian i don't really care what you do provided it doesn't affect me but on then on other issues i'm more conservative in the sense i'm like hey like let's preserve some traditionalism here but I, I feel like that's why the term politically homeless has come up, because a lot of people feel like that. You know, they don't 100 percent fit into a tribe. And therefore, when they step away from these tribal groups, they kind of get attacked by their own, so to speak. So, Sydney Watson, maybe what I'll do is throw out a couple of blanket sort of uh, topics and not not specifics uh, mm-hmm. and, and just kind of get sort of what your r- r- overall responses would be uh, towards <laughs> them. And, and you kind of being as an open book as you are, I think it'll be interesting because I think a lot of people don't hear these types of open responses in media anymore. And that's really what I'm trying to show is that it's okay to be able to have these types of conversations. So what are your right, thoughts on, on, on say, a, uh, a, a, a transgendered uh, male to female athlete that would enter a competition and, and win the race? And wins the race. Uh, you see... I'm, I'm, I think I'm probably like you in the sense of I always try to sort of approach things from a, not a moderate perspective, but the rational perspective. Do I think it's fair when um, biological men compete against women? Not necessarily. And I definitely don't think there's enough empirical evidence into this topic to justify uh, one way or the, one way or another. A lot of trans uh, activists like to say that once you've been taking hormones, particularly uh, estrogen like HRT for an, a year, you're at the same physical capacity as a female. I don't think that's true. 
especially because it's just I think these issues are more predicated on feelings rather than actual cold hard fact. Mm. When you present empirical evidence to me that a biological man competing against a biological female is okay, then we'll have a conversation. But no one can do that. So I think my thing is, I don't think that's fair. And I think that way more research needs to be done before we can have an actual conversation about it. Not you and and me, just generally. No, no. And, and, you know, very well said. And with that, with all that being said, I I actually think this is sort of the one issue. uh, And it's the reason why I led with it, which actually kind of brings liberals and conservatives together Together, in this really (laughs) big divide right now, because you're getting a lot of really true, um, you know, wonderful females and even, you know, you know, feminists and and who who are saying, whoa, wait a second. This now is going a little too far. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, no, and you're right. I mean, actually, it was interesting. I had a conversation the other day with um, with a girl I know who is a lesbian, uh, but she's also quite left wing. And she was saying to me that, you know, there's a lot of topics that she agrees with me when we when you know, the videos that I make, obviously, a lot of them recently have com- covered a lot of transgender issues, particularly how we're basically making concessions for biological men, because that's what they are. I know the trans community hates when you refer to them like that. But I think it's the the most uh, the, the easiest and simplest way to describe these situations. But yeah, the, I mean, she was even saying to me that biological men are basically infiltrating spaces that have traditionally uh, attempted to keep women safe. And now we're sort of knocking down all these barriers in order to accommodate, like I said before, how people feel. And I don't know if that's particularly helpful. I don't think it's particularly helpful, honestly. So, Sydney, why do you think it is that we are now living in a society and this goes from all the way from australia to you know right here to canada and and you know i think there's a lot of nations that still don't deal with any of this stuff because they got enough problems like famine and you know like like you know do right. you know, are, we, are we gonna get home without uh sadly getting some you know disease today and while that sounds terrible that's the facts what's going on in this world right. and all people need mm-hmm. to do is go and research out of their sort of social media feeds to see how how difficult of a world this actually is um but why do you think it is that we're catering and, and, you know, we're putting on kid gloves and we're being so careful to to not offend to the point now where everything to me actually doesn't even seem real. It just seems that people want to protect their livelihoods. They want to protect their friendships and they just want to say what everyone wants them to hear because it seems right, even if they know, like you said, biologically or factually, it may not be. Right. It's it, that's such a great question. And uh, I, I want to know when I mean, I, I like I can't specifically comment, but I would love to know when we sort of shifted from things being all about facts, logic, rationale and reason into this sort of feelings dominate everything. And I think it has a lot to do with and this might just be because I'm very anti feminism, but I think it has to do with a lot of feminist doctrine um, basically becoming very commonplace, because actually, if you look at a lot of uh the history of feminist ideas, sort of when they started becoming implanted into society, and I really hope you won't think I sound like a bit of a nutcase here in saying this, I think that's when things started to shift. So that's when a lot of this transgender stuff started to change. That's when a lot of this, oh, toxic, toxic uh, sorry, masculinity is toxic things started to come into place. And that's when a lot of this stuff started to shift, you know? And, um, I just I I think that we're kind of at this point where particularly, you know, in countries in the Western countries, America, Australia, Canada, even. And I feel bad for you guys. Like you guys are just right off the planet right now. But I think that we're trying to make concessions for past wrongs. We're trying to overcompensate for things that happened years and years and years and years ago. And it's sort of just once you get rolling like this, I think it just gains momentum. And the more that you make concessions over here, the more concessions you make over there. And eventually you're living in a society where you can't express an opinion because it might be offensive. It's usually problematic. Uh, Sydney Watson is with us. Uh, you said a couple of statements there. Uh, one, uh, the, the loss of sort of uh, masculinity and how it's a toxic environment. Then you said you guys. And I assume, which is ironic because, you, you know, <laughs> at times there's the you guys phrase. When we saw it here in Canada with a famous bro- a hockey broadcaster who said you guys. And he actually got fired from his job very recently <gasps> because he was, ref- no. you know, people people said he was referring to immigrants and only a certain kind of immigrants. So that was. But I assume in your case, you mean you white guys. Yeah, probably. (laughs) Um, No, when I use it, I'm not I'm not trying to single anyone out. I think I'm just using it in the collective. I think it's like like you. I mean, so so do you worry about I mean, you're you're obviously kind of standing by men here and saying, man, you should be able to be men. And and you're a bit against feminism. What do people think you're brainwashed? Do they think you're nuts? Can they not believe your stance? How does that work? 
You know, it's actually the funniest thing. Uh, a lot of feminists, particularly, you know, the ones that are really well known and who push a lot of these narratives. If you're a woman who is standing in defense of men, you always get these feminists who say things like, oh, you're a pick me woman. Oh, you're doing it just for the attention of men. And I think to myself, do you know how much easier it would be for me to just be a feminist? Then I would get attacked way less. I would get yelled at way less. And I would probably actually be considerably more successful because particularly in Australia, and I dare say in Canada, that is a prevailing viewpoint. Feminism has a stranglehold in my country. I can't stand it. It's actually something I love about America is it doesn't have a stranglehold here. And I mean, yeah, it would be it would be so much easier to be a feminist. And it's not to say that I don't agree with uh, some feminist ideas. Of course I do. I mean, like I'm a woman without the suffragettes. I wouldn't be here. I wouldn't be able to vote and do a bunch of other things. But we really do get to a point where things have just gone too far. And my question is, where's the line? When do we get to pull back? So, I mean, what I mean, I hate to sound ignorant here. I really do. But I, I'm just trying mm -hmm. to what what is it in your opinion or, or do what do feminists actually stand for these days? Well, they like to tell you that they stand for equality, right? But I mean, even the definition of feminism says that it's a women's movement predicated on elevating women's rights. So, I mean, men don't even come into it when you really think about it in its actual definition. And I think that right now, the like, I think there's two separate lots of feminism, right? I think you have feminism that could apply to the Middle East and African countries where women actually are treated differently and, and particularly in the Middle East, they're treated as second class citizens. That is where feminism is necessary because then it actually is elevating women's rights to that of men's rights, which I think we can all agree is necessary. However, then you look at the Western countries. And again, I don't know what Canada's like, but uh, like a lot of my fellow followers tell me that it's just as terrible as Australia, where you have these women's groups who are complaining about ridiculous things, things that don't matter, that don't affect us. I mean, you look at the women's marches that go on in the United States where they're, they're saying we don't have the same rights. And I'm a woman and I think, what rights don't you have? What are you actually trying to achieve? So I'm not sure. I think more it's become more of a supremacy movement rather than anything else. And I think it's I, really, I think it's just veiled misandry. So, Sydney, where would your stance be then on on abortion? Uh, this is one topic that I, I just I, I don't I don't discuss it. It's okay. just because it's so polarizing. And I think that no matter what you say, you get attacked. Uh, if you actually look across all my social media, I never bring it up. Interesting. It's OK, no. I'm, and listen, if you if you want to plead the fifth on this one, I, I'll, I'll afford <laughs> you that right for sure. Um, yeah. and, and again, I respect anyone for the things they want to delve into and not delve into. Um, so so, you know, and at the risk of, of saying, hey, now I'm pro male and I'm putting on a female who's pro male here. Of course, my platform is open to any feminist and I'm a love debating and I love learning uh, and mm -hmm. I love finding compromise. And and, you know, to me, I, I when I when I do hear you speak, I, I, I feel like you're saying, hey, there's one thing that's going on in certain nations where we need to fix this for women. But let's be honest, in my opinion, Sydney Watson's opinion, women have it pretty good in this Western civilization. Is that safe to say that, that yeah. that's kind of your, your yeah. line of thought? Yeah, 100 percent. Exactly. That's exactly it. And, and I'll tell you, you know, it's really interesting because and I said this, I actually only came to the realization of this about a week ago. Um, I, I, you know, I am a little bit nervous because, you know, I'm paid to be kind of outspoken and, you know, I'm a radio guy and I'm a radio guy who typically has opinions and has to have fast opinions to make a two hour show fly. And even sometimes you, <laughs> you turn off the mic after you go, oh, maybe I shouldn't have said that. I don't know. Well, you know, I hope it wasn't taken out of context or even if it mm. would be taken out of context and for sure I shouldn't have said it. But the interesting thing about it and, and why I find it so odd that I, I fear, you know, sometimes being that white man in this in this new world is it's really interesting because all my opinions and all my you know boisterous nature and opinionated nature and outgoingness and candidness and and comfortableness and to share my views it actually all came from my very strong powerful mother she was a teacher who then became a vice principal, then became a principal, then became a thought leader and a charitable individual. And in everything she did, she basically grabbed the bull by the horns and went with it. It didn't matter who was in her way. She just basically stomped over everyone to achieve what she wanted to achieve and doing the right thing. And, right. and that's what I find really ironic about this is my personality is way more my mother's than my softer, you know, well-spoken, careful father. And, 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 you know, I, I feel like maybe women don't give enough credit to that. It's almost insulting to my mom that I would just be deemed this white, you know, male yet. I learned all my strengths from her. 
Right. No, you're, you're exactly right. I mean, I look at my brother. My mom is it sounds just like your mom. You know, mom, uh, she is this like real strong, like outspoken, brilliant woman. One of the smartest people I know. And it's funny because she raised a son who is super polite, very sweet, very kind, very intelligent. I mean, and that's not to say my father didn't have a tremendous impact because he obviously did too. But but similar to you, you know, these women churn out these awesome men, but it's because they don't spend time telling their sons how toxic they are. They spend time building them up and making them confident, happy people. So they go out into society and spread that. And I think that's what's wrong with this feminist narrative at the moment where we somehow have to teach men to not be the way that they're naturally inclined to be, i.e. the protectors. I mean, when most men look, most men have these sort of natural inclinations, which I think are like these protective sort of, I mean, most men want to basically step in for women and they want to be there and they don't do things because they think women can't do it themselves. They do it because they're just naturally inclined towards that. At least that's how I feel about my guy friends and the men in my life. And so I think that it, when you really look at this, if the thing that young guys associate most with being male and their masculinity is the word toxic, and from that, that sort of terminology comes this shame and this sense of, oh, I don't want to be like that. What do you think that does to the mentality and to the ideology of those young men? That there's, there's nothing positive that comes out of that. It's, it's just such an odd way of going about changing what these women perceive to be a negative, I guess, the negative behavior of men by shaming them. I don't know. How does that work? How does that well, fix and- that? And, and, and not only that, and it's something, it's a word I've seen you use in the past, Sydney, on, on some of your social media feeds, is it trivializes sort of the heinousness of some men, okay? Like, yes. it, it it does trivialize the, the grossness and, you know, the criminal behavior and the and the actual, you know, violence and rapes and assault, you know, like the the, 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 the real terrible stuff. And and, and why, I, that, that's, I, I fear, why group it all under one brush? Right, I agree. Well, I agree. I mean, and that's the thing is like you can look at the men who are legitimately bashing their wives and partners and who are going out and committing horrible, heinous crimes. And you can't put them in the same basket as the guy who opened the door for you and you got upset because now it's sexism. Like that's not the same thing. And they're not remotely comparable. And I think that when I look at these issues and Australia is bad for this, Australia has this mentality that men need to be taught to be better. Men need to be taught to stop doing this and stop doing that. And I just think you're just you're smushing down half the population and telling them that they're that they're not valuable. Of course, that's going to result in hostility. Of course, it's going to result in men feeling disenfranchised and angry. And that's why when a lot of people look at the you know rates of violence and things in Western countries, I think, well, where is this coming from? What can we attribute it to? And I think that this narrative has a lot to do with it. Sydney, if you don't mind me asking, how, how old are you? I am. Oh, it's a big secret. Oh, <laughs> I is am, it? I, I'm in my late 20s. Okay, well, sorry, I was going to say, I, I assume you're under 30. But I mean, you, by the way, I think that everyone should should brag about their age. I think it's a, it's a thing to be I really do. I think it's a thing I to be I just got to this point where no one knows. <laughs> so now I would yeah. feel weird if anyone found out. No, no I'm 26. I, I'm 26. Well, okay. well, no, thank you for saying that. And, and what I what I respect about you is I can't imagine two things for you. One, how tough it is to be 26 and be able to have these conversations that you feel are true to you in a generation where most aren't having them. And by the way, some are having them, but it's after a couple drinks. It's at the privacy of people's homes during the dinner table, you know, during their comfortable kind of moments where where they're not afraid to share a little bit more of an honest opinion. Uh, Kind of like what we see in voting booths, by the way, where people might say one thing in a poll, but then, of course, it comes out differently when no one's looking over their shoulder. And and is it? Has this impacted your life, you being as open and with true to your beliefs? Is it Has it impacted your life in a negative way? Mm, uh, that, again, great, great question. I think yes and no. Um, it was actually funny. Right before I moved to the United States, I said to my mom, I was like, I don't, it's not too late for me to turn around and do something else with my life. And she was like, yeah, it actually is. She's like, you are, you are Googleable now and you will never, ever be able to have a normal job. And so on that front, uh, it's actually kind of weird when you realize that you've sort of picked, you've picked the area that you're going to be in forever. That's a really, really, really weird thing to consider. And it'd be the same thing for you, you know, like you're you're Googleable. So (laughs) you get to a point where you go, well, I I really probably can't go and apply for a job because as soon as they look me up on the internet, they're like, oh, I see this person hates feminism. So uh, it kind of boxes you in in that respect. But you know what? 
I think that it was necessary for me to get involved in this. And, and it happened entirely by accident. I didn't set out really to do anything. I just made a video and it kind of went viral on Facebook. Um, but I'm really happy that I did it because I think that there are so many people who feel as though, like you said, they can't express themselves and they don't have, they don't feel comfortable enough in any sort of facet of life to express these ideas and opinions. I think it's very cathartic for other people to hear someone else saying it. And that was the reason why I did it because in Australia, I didn't feel that there was anybody who is in my age bracket or even a little older than me or even younger who was expressing any ideas that I felt were true and accurate. So I was like, well, I might as well just do this because surely there are other people who feel like I feel. So yeah, it's been hard and it's been a really, really rough, like uh, how long has it been? Nearly two years, but um, I'm really glad I did it. Have there been any, any limitations in terms of uh, your your you've noticed your YouTube channel has been uh, not promoted the way maybe others might be? Is there you know we we often hear about this left wing media that kind of controls the social media platforms that doesn't allow their channels to grow with algorithms uh, algorithms right. that is like others? Have you have you sensed an impact like that? I definitely was starting to get smashed up on Facebook. Um, They banned my website and said it was hate speech. So that was fun, uh, which has in turn impacted my Instagram. Um, On YouTube, I I really like it's hard to say because my growth has been um, quite, you know, quite great. Honestly, like I'm really lucky. I feel like I have some of the like the just the coolest community. They're just such great people, such smart people. But, you know, I compare to some of my friends who one, for example, actually, uh, he works for the Blaze. And I noticed that we started at the exact same time. We both started at sort of March of last year and um, he got smashed by by YouTube. And, and I thankfully haven't experienced the same sort of um, attack that he has. But it's, it's really hard to say because I think prior to YouTube going full off the deep end, full left wing, it's hard to know how all of us would have performed with our videos and our growth and our content before youtube did that so i can't really comment but i, I mean like I'm, I'm sure i have i'm just not sure to what extent now uh, you, you know you said earlier that you you would sort of be deemed as hating feminism is it do you mm-hmm. hate all feminists well no i think you can separate people from their viewpoints for the most part i mean i know i know lots of people who would identify as feminists that are actually just nice people but i think that when your viewpoints start to impact me or you're going out into the world and you're saying, let's pass legislation that, you know, prohibits men from doing this, this and this or whatever. When it starts to have real life impact, I think that's when things shift a little bit. But no, I don't hate feminists. I, I, di- I dislike strongly their viewpoints. Um, but I think that's more of a thing where you combat bad ideas with better ideas. But oh, I don't hate them. I'm not going to go throw rocks at them. <laughs> that's what you mean. No, I, I know I don't. I mean, I'm asking the question because, you know, one of the things I do on the show, like I said earlier, is I give a platform to anybody of all, like, whatever your belief is. And I try to understand your belief. And I actually take a few days to digest it. I don't necessarily always know the answer. And I try to figure out if there's a middle somewhere. And hopefully there a middle can be found. A compromise can be found. Because without compromise, sure. there's really no involvement. And that's the fact. And at some point, you do also have to agree to disagree. But you can agree to disagree with the very good people and go you know what they have a family they got a great network they're working hard they're you know they're mm-hmm. functioning uh, in society they're paying their taxes they're contributing and you know that's a big part of it that i respect too as opposed to kind of a to me it's the hand me out culture that that makes me most mad that sort of expect things without giving and just because they can exploit a voice through social media which picks up those algorithms and promotes them they're not necessarily functioning by giving back Right. Yeah, no, I agree with you on that. Definitely agree. Well, Sydney Watson, I mean, I do appreciate your time. And uh, I, I hope, um, like I said, the, the the absolute best for anyone who's who's being true to themselves. And I imagine it's tougher to you. My last question, I guess, do you notice that? Is it more? I mean, do you have a lot of females who support you or is it, is it more of a, a men following? It's actually really interesting that you say that because when I first started, it was basically the majority of, well, the majority is still men, but it was almost entirely men. What's so interesting to me is that I was actually looking at my YouTube stats the other day, and I think between 35 to 40% of my audience is female. And, you know, I have to be honest, and anybody who hears this who's a woman (laughs) is going to know exactly what I mean. When I get messages from men, particularly on Instagram, for example, um, I, I know that there's probably like a 70% chance that it's going to be something rational and normal and something that's like, hey, Sydney, I agree with this, but, you know, maybe disagree with that. I don't get so many hateful comments from men. 
When I get a message from a woman, however, I have this visceral response where I think I'm going to open this and read something absolutely diabolical calling me every name under the sun because that is, I don't know, I don't know why it is. Maybe it's because I attract a lot of feminist hatred, but every time I get a female comment, I expect it to be negative. And so it's really interesting to uh, really interesting to me that I've gotten to a point where it seems as though more women are, are open to the things I have to say. And I think that's awesome because, you know, politics across the board, I think, is just generally more of a, of a male dominated space where men are more interested and women might be interested in other types of things. So I think it's great. No, but yeah, it's about 35 to 40 percent, which I think is super cool. I don't know how, and, and how other things people are. Write. Uh, and Sydney, one of the things I'll add to that is as a 46-year-old dude here uh, who's been in media and watched this shift happen from, you know, being uh, more cautious of what everyone says in cancel culture, I've really watched it in media, uh, you know, I've been following it tremendously and then trying to adjust to it, quite frankly, mm. to ensure I'm not canceled. You know, maybe, maybe some say <laughs> towing the line a little too much or kissing ass. But, you know, I try and find middle ground and I'm, I'm comfortable with that. Not always <laughs> the easiest place to be either, by the way. But, you know, as, as someone who's bringing two kids to this world, I got a four year old boy and I have a, uh, a, a 10, 12 week year old girl. I would say that I hope no matter what they do, if you disagree with people, which they will do, the you know the more intelligent they become, the harder working they become, and the more opinions that they form, do me a favor. If you don't agree with someone, don't attack them in that disagreement. And that is such a scary thought to me that I don't care how many people don't agree with anything you're saying. And by the way, I think there's a reason for some stuff you do say, and I understand why they wouldn't agree with that. But why go on the attack with profanities, with name calling? Because then you lose the argument, in my opinion. No, I know. I completely agree with that. I think that the be- I mean, and that's the way that I was brought up in my household. I mean, we're like we're all very loud at spoken people, but you don't you don't use ad hominem attacks. You don't bash people between the eyes to get your point across. There is a way and we've lost this ability in 2019. People have lost the ability to have an adult conversation about opposing ideas. It's fine to get heated. It's fine to be passionate. It's fine for blood pressures to rise, but you do not need to abuse another person simply because they think about the world differently. It's and, and I think that's the most important, you know, it's, we, listen, that's the most important message I, I literally always try to get across. And I appreciate you saying that. And I hope for anyone who doesn't agree with you, uh, doesn't have to go and attack you for it, but just try to have an honest debate back and forth. And, you know, yeah. Sydney, I'm sure we'll take that on. Sydney, listen, I hope we can follow up and have you back on air one day. Yeah, but no, I'd love to come back. Chuck me uh, on with a feminist. Let's you have you a three-way argument. <laughs> oh, for sure. And you got a sorry to interrupt. You got a, you had a great following. Why don't you tell everyone where they can go and find you and, uh, and disagree with you and, and call your names. Yeah, exactly. No, that's the best place to do it is on Twitter. Sydney L. Watson on Twitter, if you want to yell at me in the comments. Best place to find me is on YouTube. Just search Sydney Watson. I will pop up unless YouTube uh, decides not to let me. Uh, and on Instagram, I'm Sydney Watson underscore underscore. Because let's remember Facebook hates me. <laughs> okay. Well, listen, I appreciate your time. And um, uh, again, I don't think you have to agree with everything you say, but uh, at least you're being true to yourself and, and uh, wanting to debate people uh, if they differ. So good luck to you, and uh, we'll definitely talk down the road. Thank you for having me on. Cheers. Sydney Watson, everybody. This is the Todd Shapiro Show on Canada Talks, Sirius XM 167.